Hey everybody, this is uh, NIU Esports League of Legends once again, and welcome in to everybody on this beautiful Saturday afternoon as we're getting ready to have Northeastern University against Northern Illinois University. So a battle of the Huskies here does look like uh, teams are ready to go, and are you going to be starting on the blue side? And uh, yes, uh, and we are good to go, so we're going to be jumping into Champ Select in just a second here. Uh, Instructions here. I'm Connor Vagel, 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 as always, bringing you the action today. Uh, today's going to be a little bit different. No broadcast partner for me today, so I'm going to be the steering you through the action the all of my lonesome. Uh, and NIU doing something a little different here while going over towards the blue side. So they're going to go ahead and ban away the cane to start us off. Rumble going to be the answer here from the side of Northeastern. That's pretty common. We've talked about it every game so far that... Uh, one of these two teams is going to ban that Rumble more than likely uh, every time that uh, that NIU has or is in one of these matches. Be chilling, putting in so many games on it last season. That uh, very strong pick for him. Looking at it, it's going to be Karma taking off the board for the side of NIU. And so uh, definitely one of those flexible champs that can go top, can go support, can go pretty much anywhere. And uh, so that will be banned away by the side of NIU. Whereas Northeastern going to look to ban away the Lucian here. Fine. I don't need more and are you going to go ahead and uh, ban away the Senna here? So a little bit interesting. I was talking to the team a little bit about what they were looking to, uh, to draft here. And there were some interesting choices. Uh, surprised to see some of these bans. I think there was one that I was a little... Uh, I was maybe looking for that we'll see what happens with it, but Maokai got to be the one banned away by Northeastern here uh, to finish us off. So NIU will hover that Seraphine. Could be something for extra loaded. Could also be for boot wear, depending on how NIU wants to play it. They are going to lock in that champion. Uh, obviously, an enchanter that can be played as a carry, can be played as a support. Uh, and so it's going to be very interesting to see where NIU goes with that one. Immediately the side of Northeastern is going to hover this Lilia. Uh, obviously, still a strong pick with uh, with the item changes and everything. Uh, did get hit a little bit, uh, a little hard with the nerfs uh, during this this patch. And uh, there's that vein that uh, we've been seeing quite a bit of vein top from the side of Northeastern. It's really been. Uh, that's been their priority, but instead they will lock in the Smolder. So I know NIU has been wanting to see this one. Uh, it will be locked here for the side of Northeastern. So it should be very interesting. Uh, personally, I've been trying to pilot the champion and I can't do it at all. Like I have had the hardest time playing against Smolder. Um, I, or playing as Smolder, I should say, uh, sitting at something like one and eight. It's a terrible win rate on that champion, uh, single-handedly bringing me back down to under 50% win rate. But anyway, that's my solo queue. What we're going to see here from NIU is something a little bit interesting. They're going to go with the sad mummy and a moo moo here. Uh, very likely could be a support, could be the, uh, the jungle pick, depending on how NIU wants to play it out. Now that Wukong likely means that the Amumu is the support. So are we seeing a Seraphine Amumu type of bot lane? That could be really interesting. Or maybe even the Amumu as a counter in a solo lane, potentially. Uh, lots of flexibility with this draft so far from NIU. And I'm really curious to see how they elect to play this one out. As the side of Northeastern is going to go ahead and hover this Syndra. Something that has been traditionally very strong. Uh, has been out of the out of the meta for a little bit here just because of the uh it didn't really synergize as well with some of the mythic items in the past uh now that those are off the table syndra has had a little bit more power put back into her kit and so it will be very interesting to see if that's the direction that niu wants to or that uh to see how niu answers that one i should say now i'm interested to see the fact that uh northeastern does ban away the Cassante here Especially because we've seen that um, that the top laner here for Northeastern tends to play tends to play more of a a ranged top laner type of skill set. Uh, obviously, it's been a little interesting because um, when he's been put on traditional top laners, your your tanks, your bruisers, that sort of thing, the results haven't 
quite been as <clears throat> excuse me haven't quite been as strong as uh, as when he's been put on those range top laners. So I would be curious to see if this is the direction that IU wants to go with things. If they want to ban away something like the vein that was hovered earlier, instead they'll ban away the Braum. So they really want to limit this support champ pool, take away the Seraphine, take away the potential of Mumu, now the Blitzcrank, and then the Braum. So. It definitely, uh, even the Senna there too, and the Karma. So NIU really trying to limit this uh, this support role for the side of Northeastern and make sure that Northeastern can't just play through their bot side. Northeastern decides to answer that with the Alistair. Another thing that can be, I, you know, I'll kind of recant what I just said. I think that maybe the focus here was to not allow Smolder to have some protection. And that's been kind of... If you can punish Smolder early, he tends to be difficult to pilot later in the game. Alistair, elects to, or Alistair provides some of that protection uh, towards the Smolder. We'll see if that is uh, exactly how they want to play it out. NIU going to pick up the Evelyn, though. So not going to be the Wukong or the Amumu for, uh, for Broccoli here. He's going to go on to the Evelyn. So a little bit of a different look here from the Huskies. Uh, does kind of telegraph here that the Seraphine is going to be the bot laner, which does change a little bit up in this, uh, in this matchup. You know, the, I think uh, NIU did a good job of kind of hiding some of their picks and Aatrox is going to be the pick here for Fury as he will have to go against a, you know, uh, NIU, sorry, Northeastern, saving that last pick for counter pick in the top lane. So we'll see if the direction that Northeastern wants to head is towards something like that vein, something ranged, or if they might elect to go towards something entirely different. And that is what the Yone is going to be. So crucially for NIU, one thing to note here is on the side of Northeastern, there is an Alistair, and that is your only tank. So Yone going to have a lot of sustain, but is not necessarily a tank himself. Um, Lilia can be more bruisery, but you really need, I think with the Syndra, Syndra's probably going to be the, the more of the standard mage, but Lilia still going to look to put a lot of damage. Um, Um, but yeah, looking at this one, it's a vi Oh, wow. Actually, with under 20 seconds, this means they can't change back. And things are even different here than we imagined. So that Aatrox is not actually going to be played in the top lane. That is going to be a Wukong top to really bait out the Yone. And the Syndra is going to be played in... or Sorry, the Aatrox is going to be played in the mid lane to kind of punish this Syndra. So I'm genuinely a little bit surprised at the draft from NIU. I think that uh, it's certainly different than the style that they've played, uh, although it does allow them to have that carry jungle and that carry mid laner. Um, yeah, I mean, this really is a very facilitating uh, comp. I think there's probably a wind timer put on them here, considering that Yone is in the game and Smolder is in the game. Uh, but overall, a very interesting draft from the Huskies. Well, from both of these Huskies, I should say. So from NIU especially, I I am genuinely uh, very curious to see how this one goes with the Seraphine Amumu bot lane. Uh, definitely has the all-in potential to take down this, this Smolder-Alistair combo early. Uh, we'll have to see if they're able to do just that. Uh, whereas on the side of Northeastern, you're probably looking to see if they can just survive the early game and scale. One of the things we've noticed about this team is that they definitely look to do a, a you know, a scaling type of, uh, of, they tend to be a scaling type of team. They, they definitely look to bleed you out very, you know, not necessarily looking for a whole lot of kills, but definitely trying to find every macro advantage that they can within the game. And so, and now you're going to have to be on the lookout for that. And it's going to be a, a real test of the macro here. Uh, if NIU were to pull off this game, uh, the one thing we haven't no, uh, mentioned quite yet, Northeastern is on paper, the strongest team in the conference. Uh, so far, the results have shown that as well. 
and uh, they they are coming off conference title last semester or last uh, year, if I'm not mistaken. So definitely a very strong team, uh, and one that you know should NIU be able to pull off an upset in this one. Uh, it would be exactly that an upset, but it would be a great opportunity for the Huskies to really or for NIU to really. Uh, put our name on the map of the conference a little bit and have a statement victory here. Uh, I think that last game has given the team a lot of confidence uh, from Ohio on Wednesday, gave the team a lot of confidence and they kind of feel like they've started to understand their style of play. And so very interested to see them go ahead and, uh, and utilize that style here in this one. All right, we'll be jumping into game very, very shortly. I'm seeing it pop up on my screen as we go. Go ahead and throw into chat what you guys think is going to happen in this one. Are the are NIU going to be able to uh, pull off the upset in this game number one? What do you think of the drafts? Uh, send all of that and more into the chat, and we will uh, jump on into game very momentarily. All right, looking at it here, uh, very standard across the board. Actually, a lot of teleports from the side of NIU. They've got teleport on Wukong, Aatrox, Seraphine. Uh, Going to be the the Ignite on the Amumu as well. Looking at the side of Northeastern, they've got teleports on both the uh, top laner and mid. They're going to have on the uh, on the Smolder. It's going to be Cleanse instead of the. Uh, so the heal. I think that I, I might argue that Cleanse is not quite as strong on Smolder. Although, like I said, I may not be the the greatest authority on that considering uh, my win rate on the champion. But overall, uh, it is going to be an interesting start here. So we'll go through some of these early runes as well. It's going to be Conqueror for both, or Conqueror for Fury on the Wukong, Electrocute for Broccoli on the Evelyn. Conqueror for Be Chillin' on the Aatrox. Summon Airy on the Seraphine here for Extra Loaded. And Bootwear going to be piloting the Amumu with Glacial Augment on the side of Northeastern. It's going to be the Lethal Tempo here for Yone from Jisung. Smurfed is going to be using the Conqueror on Lilia. First Strike for Utopian Soldier on this Syndra, as well as Bliss or Bluis. List, I think it is. Um, going to be using the fleet footwork on uh, the smolder. And then it's going to be the aftershock on uh, uh, Alistair here for each end, four, five, five, six, or each end. Now, one thing that I want to bring up here again, it is interesting to see both of these ADs running the, uh, the Dorn's ring star. I think that. Dorn's Ring is definitely the stronger pickup here on Smolder. Uh, looking at it as well, does look like he put a point into Q. So I've been seeing kind of mixed responses on whether that's the right way of going about it or whether it's the right way to go with more of a Arcane Comet and a W to really get the early stacks off of your W. Um, you can stack it every time that you land one proc onto any of the uh, enemy champions. You get you know, a stack on your uh, passive. And so I've been seeing a little bit of a start, like a three points in W, one point in Q type of start. Um, but I'm genuinely curious. We'll see how they play this one out as this goes. Utopian Soldier going to take a little bit of damage. Be chilling already. Getting nice and aggressive here onto this Syndra. Now, first strike does proc. And so Utopian Soldier going to be able to grab a little bit of, of extra gold from this one. But... Overall, these lanes are just trading back and forth. Uh, looking at it, we'll keep our eye on the Smolder as we go. And right now I'm seeing that Smolder is at about five stacks. So pretty decent early uh, early stacking. Now Fury actually going to get pretty aggressive here. Broccoli also going to see the invade happening. Jisung going to be in a nice spot here, but we'll see if NIU is able to grab anything. This is going to be Jisung taken very low. Flash comes out from Broccoli and Beachill and going to be forced to uh, actually first blood goes over towards the side of Northeastern. Beachill going to be forced to flash. Lilia going to follow. It is going to be the damage coming back out, but Syndra going to be there following up with her flash of her own and just a huge fight early on here in the top lane. And uh, we talked about that 
we didn't really think that this uh, Northeastern team was really going to look for aggressive early plays just to kind of slowly bleed out the uh, the NIU roster. But yeah, that's not what happened there. Northeastern able to grab two kills with an early invade and uh, definitely putting the pressure on early here. Now they do keep vision of NIU and Broccoli here on the Evelyn. So definitely a doing a good job of having vision. Um, we'll see if we can grab Fog of War here for you. Um, but yeah, it is just going to be trades going on kind of across the map as we go. And are you looking to maybe farm out some of these waves? Uh, definitely a lot of a lot of damage that came out in the uh, and uh, farm differential that came out of that fight in both the mid and top lanes. So a little bit unfortunate for NIU, but uh, we'll see. Oh yeah, actually Fury at a two level disadvantage early on because of that, and that puts him in a in a bit of a tough spot here. So uh, this could potentially be the follow-up, and yeah, Fury going to be forced to back out of the lane, meaning that uh, this is going to be the grub advantage over towards the northeastern team. And are you is going to be kind of hovering towards this dragon to maybe answer that, but Fury not looking to back quite yet, wanting to make sure that he at least grabs some some of this CS and really uh, at least stays somewhat in this one. Uh, and are you now going to actually use Bootware and roam him up towards the, the Grubs? So it does look like NIU is going to look to contest these. They do have the early priority. HREC could be stunned up, though, and he's actually going to be taken very low. He'll be killed off by Utopian Soldier. Bootware going to have to flash away as NIU not able to get their mid laner roamed up quickly enough. And with the Yone able to disengage from Fury here, it does mean that... The side of Northeastern grabs all three Void Grubs and puts their Syndra at 2-0-1 very early on in this one. About three, or about six minutes into the game, and uh, that's going to be even more of a stun. But we're going to be dove here. The Ignite does land, and... Oh, no, he used the Ignite, my apologies. Does end up getting out of that one despite the ultimate being used by Syndra. So it will be at least the kill not dropping quite yet, but uh, and are you going to have to force are going to have to push around it here. All right, just a disengage coming through from the mid laner here, the Syndra of the side of Northeastern. That's going to be forcing the flash with the ultimate. Nicely done by Fury to actually get out of that one, but does have to use his flash to do so. And are you going to lose the first Drake as well as Smolder, as well as the Amumu? Or no, the Alistair are able to roam up for that one. It will be Infernal Drake going over towards the side of Northeastern. And this is exactly what we're talking about with that early engage and that early... Uh, Oh, nicely done. Predicting the flash. Bliss could die here. That's going to be the flash forward extra loaded. Going to be able to grab the kill. And a really nice play by NIU's bot lane. Able to grab that one. Be chilling. Going to be in a rough spot. But uh, he is able to escape. So there's at least something that goes on for NIU here. Uh, definitely, like we said, as this game slowly, uh, slowly continues to develop, We've seen some early aggression from the side of Northeastern, but at the same time, we've also seen a decent amount of uh, just pr uh, focus on farming from their solo lanes. And are you able to at least fight back a little bit, grab that early kill on towards Smolder? We'll check in on his stacks. He is sitting at 38, so he does have the first empowered W, or sorry, Q. It will be, uh, it will be doing the area of effect damage with the... Um, the dragon practice now niu has bootware here the the bandage toss doesn't land first here now he's gonna get stunned up and that probably will be the kill yeah he is gonna fall as niu getting a little too aggressive there to try to counter invade and uh not able to grab anything and this has really been the problem uh for niu so far in this one broccoli now sitting about 10 cs behind but just has lost so many buffs at this point that uh it seems like Lilia has kind of lived in NIU's side of the map here. So now that's going to be... Oh, nicely done. 
Fury able to use the ultimate to just disengage here and continue to farm out the top lane. Now that's going to be ultimate used. He does have the second proc of the ultimate. He is going to actually get the trade kill. Flash comes out, but it won't matter. Nicely done, Fury able to trade that one back. And it is a one for one. Gold lead does expand up to about 3,000 here in favor of Northeastern, though. And this is the... This is where you start to worry about Smolder. Um, in the hands of somebody who has a lot of skill on the champion, which it seems like Bliss so far does have quite a bit of skill, uh, if you're able to get those stacks really quickly, you can start to come online as a scaling champion even earlier than most can, like the 18 to 20 minute mark. And I'm a little, you know, we're seeing that that might be happening here with this Smolder. 53 seconds and 9 minutes, so uh, it does kind of exponentially ramp, though. So as you're able to get the to 125, it makes it easier to get to, one, or to 225, that sort of thing. And so we'll have to see how this one continues to play out. Lily is going to be posturing up towards the top lane. Needs to be careful about this one, considering that uh, considering that the, or the grubs are up. Now, Fury going to just step out of that. Is not going to get uh, hit by the ultimate here from Lily. Broccoli going to be able to charm up on each end. Going to be bandage charged forward, but we'll see if NIU elects to just disengage. They do indeed sitting on a ward there. So it does look like the side of Northeast is going to go ahead and start up this uh, this Void Grub. Be chilling, just taking a lot of damage here on from the Syndra. We're going to try to rotate up, but NIU not going to be able to do much about it. And so it will just be and I try and maybe contest this one. Not able to land the sweet spot. Just able to land one, but really didn't do a whole lot in the end. Void Grub's going to be taken by the side of Northeaster. They are able to grab all of them. Now, Ultimate's going to be traded here from the bot laners. And are you just going to have X reloaded back away from this one? Bandit Shaw's forward, not able to land the ultimate. And generally, we're just seeing back and forth some of these early, you know, some, some aggression from both sides, but just a little bit more damage being placed out on these trades. And just the trades going slightly more in favor of Northeastern in each of these that we see. Lots of folks towards the top lane. Fury going to find himself in a rough spot. Now, Teleport going to be used by the side of NIU. Are they going to be able to grab anything? Damage is going to come forward. Now, that's going to be Broccoli. Able to grab one. Flash is back. Now, G-Sun going to be taken low. He's also going to be traded out. Be chilling is here. Now, that's going to be two. Bandage Toss could land. He's going to be sidestepped. Now, it's going to be Flash forward. Going to be the ultimate from Bootwear. And that's going to be a double kill over towards the Wukong of Fury. And NIU doing a great job of equalizing on that one as Northeastern thought they had the ability to dive Fury and just really punish him for staying. And NIU turned that one around immediately. Unfortunately, the kills don't uh, don't include one on towards this Syndra who has started to get a bounty on her head as she is uh, 3 0 and 1 and up about 35 CS. Banish Shot's going to be landed forward. G Sun going to be taken low. He's going to be unstoppable though as he goes and pulls back with the temp uh, with the uh, w, I believe that was. Now that's going to be Fury. Going to also do a lot of damage here. G-Sung going to be taken low with the bandage tosses back and forth. Now it is going to be G-Sung able to grab one. Will he be able to just sustain up on this one? He does have the Q available now. That is going to be the stun. And yeah, Bootware also going to fall. And now you're getting a little over aggressive with that play. And it does mean that they get punished and a double kill over towards the side of G-Sung here. And because of that, and is not going to be able to contest this first or this cloud drake it will go over towards the side of northeastern and we will see the ocean soul be the one that's procced for this game and are you going to go ahead and dash forward now fury going to grab a lot of damage will he be able to grab anything out of this one no it might be just a little bit over aggressive with the overcommit. doesn't have the ultimate available to himself if he did i think that probably would have been a kill but uh, unfortunately without the ultimate available it does mean that Yone is able to just survive using that uh, that Vampiric Scepter. Nicely done. A lot of damage on from the side of B Chill and on towards oh, uh, on towards the Syndra. Thought we were gonna have a kill there with the uh, with the spike from the Evelyn, but the hate spike does not land. So nicely done by Utopia Soldier. Able to use the flash to get out of that one. Broccoli. Now gonna find a little bit more damage towards it, but that's not gonna be a lot. And ultimate's gonna be used. Trade it up. 
Thought that he had something, but a little over aggressive. And now Smurf is going to find the damage on towards Flash Forward. Uh, ultimate going to. Oh, nicely done. Actually, procking the Q. Not able to get enough out of it, though. Just too much damage here from Utopian Soldier. And he is 4 0 oh, 2, sitting on three stacks, stacks of the Dark Seal, as well as the Lilia sitting on three stacks of the Dark Seal herself. And are you needing to do a little bit more to focus on farming their uh, their jungle here? It's been really tough for Evelyn, like we talked about, and this is really the consequence of that. Now a almost 40 CS differential between the Evelyn and Lilia here. And crucially, uh, while the CS might not be the biggest deal because of how jungle CS is measured, the really important part of that, Bandage Toss Forward, nicely done. Bootware says, let's go in. Uh, Extra loaded, not quite ready to do so, but that's going to be quite a bit of damage. Each end going to be taken low. And are you going to go ahead and use the bandage toss forward? Now, this could be the kill on towards each end. Still very low. Ultimates traded back, and bootware is going to fall, but extra loaded does have some damage. Could potentially grab some on towards Bliss here. We'll see if he's able to do that. That is going to be the stun. No, that's just flashes traded. We'll see a W may do it if it lands and it does and unfortunately niu does lose out on that trade two to one which allows the side of northeastern to go ahead and start this uh rift herald and finish that one off as well 11 to 6 are the kills and about a six thousand gold lead at 15 minutes here for the side of northeastern so definitely in a very advantageous position are the northeastern huskies but and NIU certainly not out of it. I mean, this is a, this is really a, a nice fight that the NIU Huskies have been able to put on so far. And uh, we'll see if they're able to continue to do so and maybe uh, continue to get their champs online. You know, Aatrox still hasn't finished up an item. Uh, same with the Wukong and uh, same with the support. And actually, the only person who has finished off an item is Seraphine with that uh, Rod of Ages. This is a little bit dangerous. Fury going to take a little bit of damage. And with that, Blade of the Rune King nicely done to dash away from that. And uh, it does look like, yet again, we're going to see another invade from the side of Northeastern. They're going to go ahead and just steal away this blue buff. And uh, at the same time, Seraph or sorry, Syndra will also be uh, clearing out that Tier 2 turret out. Yep, Tier 2 turret in the mid lane. So NIU slowly but surely bleeding out some of their turrets. And, you know, that's what we talked about being kind of Northeastern's win condition here is just to continue slowly but surely bleeding you out. Now, NIU needs to be careful. Your Fury is there, but the Hate Spike does land. It's going to be a lot of damage. Wiss going to be taken down, but double teleport's going to be committed here from Northeastern. We'll see if NIU is able to get anybody out of this. It's going to be the solo laners from the side of Northeastern, and it will be turned around and just trade kills. Now, NIU is going to go ahead and dive forward with Bandit Toss. Bootware does use that. Not able to grab much else after that, and so he will back away. 13 to 7 the kills, but look at that gold lead. It's blossomed up to about 9,500 in favor of Northeastern, and uh, they've got the turrets. They've still got... They did use the Herald, so that was used in mid lane. Uh, so luckily, we don't have to worry about that one still being available to them. But Evelyn has finished up the Lich Bane, so that's a great starting item for her. Uh, oh, Bandage Toss doesn't land. I thought that was going to get there, but Ultimate now going to be followed up on. Bandage Toss is going to be followed up here by the side of Bootware. We'll see if they're able to grab the damage. We know that Jisung has to dash back, so eventually he will, and that's going to be the damage. Now, flashing out of it. Flashing forward, Bandage Toss does land. Evelyn going to be able to get the shutdown. I thought for a second that Jisung might have been able to get out of that one. Luckily, NIU doing a nice job of getting the pick, and so they will at least trade one kill back for themselves in this one. 600 gold uh, bounty on the side of the Syndra, so it really is... Uh, that champ needs to be shut down here if you're NIU. Unfortunately, it just is so tough to do so when Syndra is sitting on two items and Aatrox just now finishing the uh his first item which is going to be the profane hydra so a good good start for him um actually niu coming online with a bunch of their first items here so we do see the titan or the uh triforce finished off for wukong here by fury uh we see the lich bane for the evelyn here of broccoli uh broccoli will have his empowered smite with one more auto or with one more camp cleared now be chill and just 
takes so much damage from that Syndra, and it's just really unfortunate. Uh, not able to grab his offensive items quite yet. Broccoli going to be there to potentially grab the hate spike. Doesn't land. Now he could be stunned up, and uh, and you're going to have to be careful here. Utopian Soldier just going to walk away. And there is an Ichen in this bush, an Alistair, so he's just walking, waiting around, seeing if NIU steps a little too far forward. Luckily for us, they will not, so they'll go ahead and continue to just try to put some pressure on. They do look like they have an Amumu going for a potential dive here on towards Jisung. Unfortunately, that is a that is the Lilia following up here, so we'll see if NIU is able to do anything about it. Seraphine is here as well. The Bandage Toss does not land first rock of it, but we'll see. That's going to be the ultimate. Going to be traded out with an ultimate of Yone's own as Seraphine's is not able to land. And uh, look at a little bit of damage out towards this, uh, out towards the Alistair, but Wukong going to step into a tough position, and that's going to be the ultimate being used by Smolder. The ultimate also going to be used by the side of the... the ...stun, and then the ultimate to mean that uh, NIU does get the kill on towards the Syndra. Now, this is a little too far forward, a little aggressive by the Huskies. We'll see if they're able to grab anything out of it. They do not. They lose bootwear. Flash comes forward from Chillin, but he's going to take a lot of damage. Actually, Syndra, or sorry, Lilia's ultimate hadn't landed. I thought it had, but this is going to be Lilia using it now and putting three members of NIU to sleep. They're going to go ahead and take some more damage, and unfortunately, I think this really is just the end of the game for uh, where Northeastern will go ahead and grab it as this is a 10,000 gold lead at 20 minutes. Northeastern will start to pressure on towards NIU's inhibitor turrets and uh, they'll grab that first one in the mid lane. They'll go ahead and grab the inhibitor as well. But uh, Smurfed's going to be taken low. Be chilling, going to be in a position if Bootwear is able to grab anything. And uh, now they'll see if they're able to grab anything on the back end. They do grab some damage on towards each end. But it is just going to be a lot going back towards Beach Hill, and unfortunately, Bootwear will fall. But that's a lot of damage from Evelyn. They may be able to trade something back. Ultimate going to be used by the by the Smolder, but it won't be able to grab any damage. Now we're going to see NIU go ahead and go forward. That is two inhibitors that have been taken by Northeastern. NIU may look to re-engage here. That's going to be the first W used by the by the Seraphine, but now the Flash comes forward, that's going to be a lot of damage, and Seraphine just going to be traded back, but actually, NIU going to turn one around, and they're going to grab a kill of their own on towards the support, as the Alistair has been traded, NIU going to go forward here, Hate Spike going to be used by the Bro by Broccoli, he's going to actually grab the damage on towards Wiss, and NIU on the other side will be grabbing the kill on towards Syndra, Fury going to be taking Jisung very low, NIU will see if they're able to grab that, that's going to be the kill on towards Broccoli, and all of a sudden, Despite losing a bunch of their base, NIU able to grab a bunch of kills and potentially get some gold back in their pocket to uh, to have some opportunity to contest. With Baron available right now, uh, respawns are going to come a little too soon. I don't think NIU will be able to contest any sort, or will be able to just try to sneak a Baron or anything. But NIU does have vision here. Smurfed going to be following up on bootwear, potentially looking for an extra kill. Now dash forward, Bandage Toss is there. And uh, this is going to be the ultimate used by uh, by Smurfed. The damage does come through, but Northeastern kind of stepping a little far forward here. We'll see if they're able to trade anything back. NIU not able to do so. Now Broccoli going to have to gonna make the call to step away boot where has uh is quite low and with uh no mid laner here from the side of niu northeastern will elect to just push on into the base once again extra load gonna go ahead and speed them up so that they can get away from this one and niu does look like they're gonna tr uh northeastern is gonna try to siege using the top and mid waves so we'll see if the niu huskies are able to uh kind of steer that one out and maybe grab some more damage like they did in the last fight if they're able to take a good fight bootwear going to be taken very low that's going to be the damage followed up and bootwear will just fall and niu will lose one of their nexus turrets now that's going to be ultimate from the uh smolder being used now ultimate's going to be traded back and you going to be able to grab one they're going to grab the damage forward and actually they're going to grab three kills of their own and Northeastern might have bitten off more than they can chew. NIU will grab the Smolder as well, and that will be a four for one in favor of the Huskies trading only their support 
for or in favor of the NIU Huskies trading only their support for the uh, for four, they might be able to grab the dragon or even potentially choose to go towards a baron. Looks like Lilia is going to go towards the dragon herself, so NIU may just look to grab this themselves. Um, I think that's really the opportunity you have. And now Hate Spike could it land? No, it won't. And Lilia unfortunately has so much move speed. Ultimate going to be used as well with the Drowsy, and NIU gonna have to disengage on this one. Just look to grab the Dragon. They're gonna go ahead and grab a lot of damage on towards the Lilia, but they need to trade something back. And this is really the problem with that champion. Yeah, and with B or with the Syndra having shown up, this is a little bit too late for NIU. They needed to kind of grab the kills. And unfortunately, it was too little too late as now the Winions are going towards the base. NIU is gonna lose their Nexus tier two, or near Nexus, turret number two smolder gonna go ahead and ping on towards vision of the baron but it doesn't look like it's even necessary it's gonna be bootware versus the world here and are you doing a little bit too much chasing and the lilia with too much move speed and are you not able to grab the pick they're gonna try what they can but they don't have the wave clear available that's gonna be game number one going over towards northeastern and the gold lead wasn't particularly close but the kills were really close and NIU doing a nice job of keeping the game pretty pretty close where they could. Unfortunately, obviously, the, the gold was kind of the issue here for the Northern Illinois Huskies. All right. Well, obviously, a little bit of a, a different look for the Huskies. We'll see if that's what they elect to go towards with game number two. And uh, game number two will be with you very shortly. And uh, we'll be back with Northern Illinois Zero. Northeastern won very soon.
All right, and welcome back to game number two of NIU versus Northeastern Battle of the Huskies in Collegiate League of Legends here in the Esports Collegiate Conference. Looks like we're just about ready to jump into game number two. NIU will stick around on the blue side. Um, just to give an idea of what the matchup is here, uh, Jisung is a Grandmaster's top laner. Smurfed is a challenger in a current challenger, the current rank 60 challenger in jungle so and uh ma there's a master usual grandmaster support here for uh, and also i think sometimes challenger uh support here from the side of northeastern all that to say this is a very very tough team that we northeastern is fielding and niu doing a great job of sticking around and sticking with it throughout that game uh, despite kind of losing that gold uh disadvantage throughout the matchup and I will go ahead and start off the bands with the cane, followed up by the rumble band here by the side of Northeastern. Those are both very standard bands. Uh, we've been seeing them pretty often. And I, you're not going to change much else with the bands as well. They're going to go ahead and ban out the karma here from their own side. Uh, Northeastern, we'll see if they elect to go back towards the same bands that they had last game. They had a Maokai and a Kasante here, and the Kasante is going to be followed up here. NIU, I believe they went with, um, oh, I don't remember off the top of my head where they went with this one. If we see the same thing, then we'll know. Um, but I would, yeah, the Senna, that was the one, and there it is. So Ban's not going to stay, or not going to get really changed at all here from either side. Uh, Maokai, yep, once again, going to be banned away. So you do wonder if this is going to allow the side of Northeastern to pick up the vein and... We're going to see the Seraphine picked up here by the side of uh, NIU. So they'll lock in the same thing. First different pick that we have here is the Samira. So definitely a more carry, a more carry focused one. Um, and so, oh, Camille. So definitely actually putting a lot of pressure on NIU here. Uh, really getting the priority for two of the champ or two of the players that maybe weren't as necessarily impactful, I would say, in game number one, uh, in that ADC as well as Jisung. I think Jisung was pretty was pretty impactful, um, but maybe wasn't as much of a carry as the Lilia and uh, the Syndra here. And I will go ahead and grab the Aurelian Soul. Now that Camille could be the support. We've seen a little bit of Camille support coming out here instead of top lane, so. Uh, NIU will instead take away the Alistair here after picking up the Aurelian Soul. Aurelian Soul is in a weird spot right now where he did get those buffs, but then he was hotfix nerfed because they went too far with the buffs. And now it's kind of a question of, is he actually in a better spot than he was before the buffs even happened? NIU seems to think so, as they're going to lock him in for be chilling, but it is going to be an interesting choice here if they, uh, and we'll have to see where this goes. On the side of Northeastern, they're going to grab the Silas, so they're going to answer the mid lane. So this leads me to think that this is very likely matching picks so far. So I think we've got top laners, we've got supports, and we've got mid laners. Not top laners, sorry. ADCs, uh, mid laners, and supports. I think we're still looking for top and jungle from each of these teams, but that Camille is where really where that kind of gets thrown off a bit. Teemo going to be banned away. Not... Well, you have to imagine that's trying to bait out a Vayne ban with the Teemo. I mean, Teemo kind of one of the few champs that does really well into a Vayne top. Um, Lillian going to be banned away, though, by the side of NIU. So they're, they're kind of trying to force the side of Northeastern's hand here. We'll see where they go with this last ban here from Northeastern. Could very well be a jungle ban. Kind of limiting Broccoli's champ pool. They, uh, depending on how confident they feel playing into it, and they are going to ban Viego, which is interesting because Broccoli, I, I don't believe, plays a whole lot of Viego. It's been something that, you know, he's trying to add to his repertoire, but hasn't been something he's shown so far in the ESC. So we'll have to see if that, you know, that one could just be a ban of. Uh, of the, the champ just for it or just for the heck of it and IU will ban away the Zinzao. so 
I guess they're saying to to Northeastern, if you're gonna play the the vein, go ahead and do it. We we feel like we can play into it and that sort of thing. So it's gonna be the Vi to make sure that there is a mid or still a jungle influence. And so we still don't know if that Camille is going support or if it's going to be the top lane. So it really seems like they're going to elect to flex that one and potentially see uh, whether they can get a counter pick in the top lane or if it's something where they just want to play safe and go with um, go with what they've got. So and now you uh, hold the phone. That is a talent played here. Um, I don't think I've seen a talent in game in multiple years. Um, Wow. Uh, I mean, excuse me, that leaves me speechless. I I don't even know what to say. We, I mean, it's going to be a Talon jungle. You'd have to imagine. And the Snar is going top lane. But holy moly, that is, uh, that is something. And is that a mid Varus? Oh, really? Wow. Um. So rather than a top or rather than a top vein, we're gonna get top Varus. Uh, we talked about it. This guy plays range top laners and um. <sighs> I, I don't even know what to say at this point because this is just this is a wonky draft from both sides. Uh, Camille going to be kind of tanky, Vayne or Vi going to be kind of tanky, uh, but the side of Northeastern really lacks a tank. Although it didn't really matter for them last game, the side of an IU definitely has a couple of tanks, but they have a more standard front to back team fight, but. Uh, they lack that true ADC threat. So I'm genuinely curious where this is all going to go. Um, it's weird. Smurf is going to be in the LCS. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have to say, when, when you have a collegiate player who, and, you know, maybe he doesn't want to, that's totally fine if Smurf does not. That not gearing towards that, but Smurf is a player that is strong enough to play in the LCS. Um, top sixty Chaley is is not a joke by any means. So this is especially at the collegiate level. So I I want to be totally totally clear. NIU pulling you know keeping close in these games is a huge huge ask and is a you know to be able to do so is really kudos to them because this is a team from Northeastern that I would be surprised if there wasn't at least one one player that at least made an academy roster after this and I would be really surprised if this team does not go on and actually make a run for the national championship now I'm not saying they necessarily will get to the top eight in the live the live show but I wouldn't be surprised to see them win games at the round of 32 at the at the latest. So um with that in mind, this is a this is a team that NIU is going to have to, you know, it's it's not necessarily a measuring stick. I mean, how close they're able to keep it, I think, would be the measuring stick. And um generally I, I know they're they're pretty confident that uh some of those early matchups they they feel like they're you know they weren't quite with their footing yet. And especially this NIU roster has had very little time to play together um that that is the the harsh reality of it is um broccoli and uh broccoli or within the starting roster at least uh, broccoli is new to the roster um we had players leave at the end of uh spring or at the end of fall semester and to see them kind of find their footing this quickly has been really uh really a good accomplishment to see and so 
I think NIU, uh, in talking with some of the players, I've heard that they they feel like they uh, they have something to say, and uh, they feel like the playoffs would be their time to shine and kind of kind of show what they are actually capable of against some of the competition that may have uh, they may have not performed to their standards uh, earlier on in the season. So we'll see how this one goes. We are into game number two. Uh, we are once again going to see the teleports on top, mid, and ADC for NIU. On the side of Northeastern, it's going to be a little different. We're going to see the same summer spells that we saw last game. Looking at, oh, except Varus is going to actually take the ghost instead of the teleport. Uh, looking across the board, it's going to be Fleet Footwork for the NAR, very standard. Uh, first Strike for Talon, again, pretty standard. And we'll cover this right now because it is going to be five stacks from both teams, it looks like. And are you going to elect to go through the mid lane and five stack here, whereas the side of Northeastern is going to go through the top lane and five stack. And we could very well see uh, these teams meet up in the jungle. And actually, they're going to kind of just run past each other. So we'll see how that goes. Now, NIU does have the opportunity. If they stick around here, they are going to recall, place the vision and recall. But if they stick around, they may spot them out. It does look like Northeastern places their own deep ward. NIU may find these guys. They did not elect to recall. They are going to find one. That's going to be Silas going forward with the Absonded Duck. Actually, they did recall the bot lane, and it's going to be First Blood going over towards the side of Northeastern. And uh, unfortunately, that does go on towards Jisung. So that does mean that the AD does get, or the uh, top laner does get an early kill. Now, NIU didn't lose a whole lot in that process. Uh, no summoner spells blown. Once we chill and knew he was dead, he, he gave up the gold and everything, gave up the, the 550 for first blood. But he didn't use a flash, didn't use a heal, nothing like that. So... It does mean that uh, while it isn't the greatest situation to be in, it could have been worse. And NIU now going to do a lot of damage on towards Etchen here. And uh, actually, it's going to be traded right back. Bootware with the Ignite. Flash going to be forced by NIU. And NIU not quite able to grab a lot out of that one. And maybe a little too aggressive. Having to blow Flash and Ignite here in comparison to just the Ignite from Echen. Or Etchen. Uh, Just the dash forward. That's going to be a lot of damage from Utopian Soldier on towards Be Chillin' here. Now, Ghost going to be popped by Jisung. He's going to really try to pop Fury out of this lane. He's going to take a turret shot, so uh, Fury going to just have to worry about the potential freeze here. And Wiss actually going to take a turret shot here. But overall, um, like I was saying before the game started, this is a team from Northeastern that is really a strong roster, has a lot of strong players, and uh, keeping with it is they you strength that it should show what they're capable of in the you know, against might uh, pay a little bit closer to their level. So we're gonna see the invades just start coming here smart. Uh look for the early being the red, he's gonna be able to grab that. I've got pause of the playback. I don't know if there was maybe a pause here in the act. Uh, I'm not seeing anything here. Right, I'm seeing it three minutes. So, was there a remake accident? Nope, there we go. Okay, got it back on my end here. All right, Utopian Soldier, gonna go ahead and uh, take a little bit of damage here from the Aurelian uh, Soul of uh, of the Chill and Fury. Tough spot here needs to be able to grab uh, or needs to be able to get out. Of the Nicely done. Jisung might actually oh no, knock the fall. Was very close to doing so, and Fury doing a really nice job of countering that dive. Be Chill gonna be taken low, but. It isn't going to be a whole lot of damage either way. No real kill pressure from either of these teams. And uh, the biggest thing to note is that... Oh, actually, Utopian Soldier going to dive forward. That's going to be the kill. No, actually traded away, interrupting the uh, the flame breath there was the Silas. And unfortunately, it does mean that the second kill of the game goes over towards the side of Northeastern. Onto Utopian Soldier and... Uh, is again be chill and falling for the second time in this match. 
Oh, there we go. Yep, I am a bit behind it. Finally loaded a bit, and now I am here. So I've gotten to live. We're seeing boot where he's going to get flashed on. Wiss is going to actually take a lot of damage, but we'll see if he's able to grab any kills. He is uh, still pretty low. Talon is here. Broccoli going to be able to grab some damage. Oh, no. Not able to grab the kill, though. We'll see if NIU elects to go for a dive here. Uh, Camille is going to probably get out of this one. Going to actually be, oh, no, finishes the recall. And are you not able to grab anything off of that? And really unfortunate, three to nothing are the kills over towards the side of Northeastern. Vi is here once again, meaning that Fury needs to just get out of that one. And uh, this will mean that the Void Grubs will go over towards the side of Northeastern. And are you not really having the uh, having the items be able to take this dragon quite yet? First Grub will go over towards Vi. Second grub should be going very shortly. Fury going to be taken to about half HP. Jisung only losing about a quarter. And uh, so Northeastern knows that the that the Alistair bootwear is here. They're going to follow this up, and NIU just doesn't really get much out of that. Chains of Corruption does miss, but doesn't really matter in the end as Fury is taken very low. Is going to use the Ghost as Jisung. Fury will dive out of that, but it won't matter. Smurfed is going to be able to grab the kill with the uh, with the Vault Breaker, and it will mean that 4-0 uh, are the kills in favor of Northeastern here. Possibly more as now Ash is going to get stunned up here, but we'll see if he's able to do the damage. 4-0 in favor of Northeastern, as well as a 3,000 gold lead in favor of those Huskies. Northeast, no, but uh, at the side, he does remember, and I in a little freeze him. I a little bit behind as we go. So, uh, unfortunate timing, too. As oh, there we go. Okay, as it is going to be now four members of Northeastern just they know that NIU is here. Now Beach Hill is going to be able to use his ultimate and grab the kill here. NIU will just trade this one back and uh, it wasn't NIU or Northeastern thought that uh, that NIU was locked in with them. Unfortunately, this was actually or fortunately for NIU, this was actually uh, Northeastern locked in the cage with NIU. So NIU able to turn that one around, grab the kill on towards the Camille. And they'll grab something out of that one, be chill, and we'll start his uh, start his scaling. But uh, overall, Fury now has access to his ultimate, so he's going to use that now, get a lot of damage, and actually, uh, he might be able to grab a kill here. Jisung going to be taken pretty low, and uh, the poke is available. Ooh, the boulder toss just doesn't land. Does mean that uh, the boomerang will not quite be available. Flash forward, now going to be the... Chains of Corruption, NIU not able, or no, Fury not able to grab anything. The Flash ulti combo does mean that the kill goes over towards Northeastern and Jisung. He'll be 2-0-1 on this Varus at 8 minutes into the game. I'm falling behind. Um, and so that will mean that uh, we do see that one there. There we go. Should be back to live now. Yep, there we go. And so, yeah, just some damage on forward. Now, Utopian Soldier is going to go ahead and dash in, but uh, Vichel not really able to grab a whole lot here. Vain, or Vi is going to be kind of posturing towards this mid lane, so I knew needs to be careful. Vichel is going to go ahead and recall, but uh, doesn't mean that now Vi has the opportunity to go up towards Nar and Fury once again. And uh, looks like this might be another dive, potentially. Fury going to sit on a lot of rage, but not quite enough to be able to transform. And uh, we'll see if there's enough going to be there. Fury needs to be able to grab this, but the Vi and uh, Varus are doing a good job of kind of keeping them off of this. Now, since Vi is sitting up towards the top side, and are you going to go ahead and start up this dragon? This is a lot of damage on towards extra loaded, but it could be with the stun. Utopian Soldier going to be taken low now. Ultimately going to be used by Seraphine. It is going to be the kill going over towards B Chill and change the corruption. Do land, but it's going to be Vi also getting killed off. No, not going to fall. And I just barely miss or Fury just barely missing the bolded toss, which probably would have traded aggro had he gotten that first kill. Unfortunately, not able to do so. So it does mean that 
the side of Northeastern is able to escape with that one. Uh, but NIU does grab the kill on towards the Silas here of Utopian Soldier, and they grab the dragon of themselves or of their own. So they will have that uh, first objective, and for the first time this series, they'll actually have an objective. Now, Jin Sung or Ji Sung is going to be taken very low. Be chill and able to grab his third kill of the game, and this dragon is starting to get pretty strong. Be chill needs to be able to get out. He is going to be able to do so. But uh, it does look like the side of Northeastern has roamed up a couple of members towards this mid lane. And uh, just the Camille, I should say. And then Silas is going to be there to back up his Vi. But they decide not to go for the uh, for the Void Grubs quite yet. Camille going to go ahead and try to rotate here with Seraphine. Uh, just looking to farm. Extra loaded, going to be able to grab the stun, but not able to grab a whole lot more out of that one. But will keep himself alive. So... That's a good play here for the Huskies of NIU. They'll be sitting on three kills, all on be chillin. But NIU now will look to potentially contest this first uh, or the second set of grubs. Uh, Vi and uh, Silas are also here, but NIU does have inside positioning. The big thing to note, though, is Nar is sitting on Meganar right now, so he won't have that available for any potential fight, and NIU does look like they're electing to call off any sort of fight because of the fact that uh, the, the transform won't be available. So unlike last game, one of the things to note about this one for NIU is the fact that, uh, that Broccoli is sitting on a little bit more CS than, uh, than Smurfed is. I mean, NIU has the opportunity here. Bootware going to be sitting on a ward, but this is going to be... Smurfed actually taken very low. Going to be forced to flash. Going to be using the ulti. Chains of Corruption do not land, but NIU not having anybody here. Do you tell me it's soldier taken very low? Be chillin' is here. NIU will look to just re... Uh, re-engage on that one, but Utopian Soldier will be able to kill Fury. Now, NIU looks like they might want to re-engage on Smurfed here. He is very low. They're sticking around, and Talon is here too. Utopian Soldier going to be able to grab some damage on towards Be Chillin, but now the damage is traded back. NIU able to grab one, and it will be potentially a second. They might just say, you know what, we've got the kill. We're going to back away from it. Be Chillin going to go ahead and use the damage. Ji Sung has gotten the kill on towards Bootware, but now he's gotten a second kill. Be chill and able to grab the kill on towards uh, on towards Talon or sorry Talon killed off by Ji Sung. Be chill and able to grab the kill on towards Smurfed. Now able to grab a kill on towards Ji Sung, and this is a five two and one Aurelian Soul one one and three on the Talon. And NIU starting to get their mid laner into this game, especially now that he's got that Rylize Crystal Scepter and has the slows available to himself. Looking at Talon though. He's sitting on uh, four more stacks on his uh, on his jungle Pokemon and has a Yomu's Ghost Blade. So he is starting to be able to roam around the map and get quite a bit of damage. Neither team able to finish off all the grubs. It does look like five of them went over towards the side of Northeastern. The sixth one is uh, being left uncontested. So it looks like uh, they'll just wait for the Rift Herald to spawn and kind of wait for them to force despawn themselves, the, the grubs that is. But NIU doing a nice job of sticking around in this game and uh, keeping things pretty close, to be honest. And not just keeping them close, but having answers to some of the plays that Northeastern has been looking to make. Now, Camille is kind of in a rough spot here. We'll see if NIU looks to uh, grab anything out of that. And dashing forward but not able to grab the hookshot is Camille. Now we do see that the side of Northeastern is going to roam up and grab the... Uh, the last grub and I use says you know what we'll just let him have it so Nar is going to be able to uh, not able to clear I should say that uh, control ward Talon is here but Smurf uh, Smurfed is going to be taken to about half HP as that's the power of this Talon to be able to just kind of dive in and now that's going to be a bunch of damage Charm does land on towards each and he is going to have the uh, the Adaptive Force. Alt does come through. Flash forward. Now NIU able to grab quite a bit. They're able to grab one back. And now Samira going to be taken low as well. Be chill and going to be able to grab another kill. 6-2-2 two, and two on this champion. Alistair did grab one. Now the bandage toss, or the, uh, sorry, the boulder toss does come forward. NIU able to grab one. Fury grabbing that kill. But the, the potential 
the teleport does come through. Fury able to grab one back, the stun, but not able to grab the kill. Utopian Soldier is going to live with about half HP. Broccoli gets the slow. He'll be able to dive a roll across this turret. Now that's going to be the ultimate, though. Used by Vi does mean that no, uh, no assists go over towards the side of Northeastern, but NIU keeping things relatively even. Uh, two, for, two for one in favor of Northeastern here, but earlier on they were able to grab more back, and so look at that gold. It's only a 1.2k gold lead here at 15 minutes, so much, much closer than we saw in game number one. It is going to blossom a little bit here with Utopian Soldier able to grab the kill on towards the top lane, or the, the turret uh, on towards the top lane, tier one. Um, Harold has spawned, so we'll see if NIU looks to contest this one, but be chillin' as one of the carries of this team, getting the opportunity to do so has really, uh, it's really blossomed here. Now, Etchen is going to be taking a little, just a little bit of damage, traded back and forth here, and, uh, NIU will look to potentially fight over this Cloud Drake, the first, or the only one of those in the game. And uh, so we will see a different soul ultimate from bootware is going to be stolen by Utopian Soldier. The side of Northeastern will start up this Drake. So NIU likely will just choose to not contest. No, they, they'll they actually choose to try to grab vision of this one. They are going to go ahead and it is burning down very quickly. NIU needs to get in here. They are going to be able to do so, knocking away the, the jungler. And NIU able to grab the kill. They're going to sacrifice their jungler for it, or sorry, their support for it, but are they able to grab anything? They're able to grab one kill back, and now be chillin', gonna be taken on the side. Utopian Soldier take it very low. That's gonna be the kill going on towards uh, the side of Northeastern. Ichin taken low as well. Be chillin', able to grab that. Now Smite does flash forward, smurfed, and it is a three for three. Be chillin', gonna fall, and will be shut down, but crucially does get another kill of his own, and Talon here from Broccoli, able to get two kills out of that one, and the Dragon. So, NIU, I think actually it was an extended uh, one additional kill was go went over towards the side of Northeastern. Ultimate gonna be used. That's gonna be the kill, potentially, going over towards the Jisung, but that's gonna be traded back as the ultimate is used from the Vi, Broccoli's here, though, as is Fury, so Smurfed may fall as well. NIU able to grab this, flashing away. Ichin doing a nice job, or sorry, Bootware doing a nice job of headbutting. Uh, Ichin, no pulverize there, so it does just mean that Etchin or Ichin gets away. But NIU, 14 to 16, only about a 2.4k gold lead. Got a little bit bigger there for the side of Northeastern, but NIU doing a nice job of keeping their advantage and continuing to press it forward. The Collector now picked up by Samira, so that's one thing that... Uh, so two things of big note here, looking at the builds. That is a Rageblade and a Void of the Rune King already finished for the side of uh, the Varus, compared to Gnar sitting on no items quite yet. That is a tough proposition for the side of NIU to have to fight through. However, they do have two Riley's Crystal Scepters, one on the Aurelian uh, Soul, one on the uh, Seraphine. And, I mean, that's one of the big things, is that uh, the Varus is definitely trying to poke out and chase forward, and uh, I think with those items, you definitely have the opportunity to kind of take them out. Also, look at the Axiomark and the uh, the Yomu's Ghost Blade here for, uh, for Talon. And are you now going to have three here, the immediate use of the uh, Chains of Corruption, but it doesn't matter. NIU able to grab the kill on towards on towards Jisung early, and now NIU might be able to grab something on towards Utopian Soldier. He's going to go ahead and steal the ulti from uh, from Talon, but it doesn't matter. Stun comes through. Fury doing a nice job stunning him back. Gnar ultimate going to be used, and Beach Hill and is going to grab that kill as well. NIU doing a really nice job. Now they're going to be able to grab a second turret in the bot lane more than likely, and uh, it does look like the side of Northeastern will trade this one out, but Look at that split calls coming out from Northeastern, and that is what you want to see if you're NIU. You want to be putting this Northeastern team in a position where they have not been this season, where they are uncomfortable making split calls because they are not sure what the right call is. And NIU is the team that's put them in this position. As crazy as it sounds and as excited as I'm sounding right now, this is actually really important for NIU and a really strong showing 
Now, even if they they aren't able to pull this game, each is gonna fall as well here. That's just everybody from NIU collapsing, and they're playing as a full unit here. NIU gonna be able to start up this Rift Herald. They'll potentially see what they're able to do out of it. They have a kill lead here, and I think Northeastern is going to elect to go in here. Now, that's gonna be a lot of damage. Smurf is gonna be t uh, taking them very low. NIU will follow this up. It is gonna be the one kill going over towards the side of Northeastern, but it won't matter. NIU gonna follow this up with a kill of their own, a second kill going over towards the Huskies. Now, uh, now Jisung is taking NIU very low. Jisung is gonna follow this up, but Fury gonna be grabbing the kill here. Actually, it'll go over towards Bootwear, and NIU will take the three for three in the extended fight. And overall, look at the kills. NIU has a kill lead on this Northeastern roster. The gold, pretty much even. It's a slight 1,000 gold lead over towards the side of Northeastern. Those Huskies do have uh, the slight lead in this game. But look at that. We've got Broccoli, 4, 3, and 11. We've got Be Chillin, 9, 4, and 7. And the Seraphine now has her Seraph's Embrace. The uh, Leandres is finished on the on the Aurelian Soul. The Trinity Force is finished by the Gnar, and Anathema's Chain is going to be the first item picked up here by the Alistair. So NIU in a spot where with this uh, uh, first Mountain Drake spawning in just nine seconds, NIU going to get a vision of this, and they're just going to go ahead and dash forward and put some pressure on the side of Northeastern to try to disengage here so that they can grab this dragon. And IU does see uh, the Silas on the side lane here. And Fury going to be taken to about three quarters HP. He'll look to try to grab his ultimate and maybe heal up now. That's going to have to dash away is smurfed. And yeah, NIU just forcing the side of, of Northeastern to continuously back away and continuously re-engage in different ways. Now, Beach Hill going to be taken very low. Flashes away, able to grab the kill. Bliss also going to fall. NIU going to grab two, potentially three. Now, the ultimate does come out towards each end, but it doesn't matter. NIU going to be able to grab one there on their own. And so it will be a three for one in favor of NIU. Now make it a four for one as Broccoli's on a killing spree. Able to grab that one as well. And look at that, folks. Smurfed is going to walk away. NIU will put themselves on Drake Point. On Soul Point, I should say. And for the first time this series, that, when NIU clears this wave, will be a gold lead in favor of Northern Illinois on this one. And they're not stopping now. They're walking over towards the Baron, and they will go ahead and try to start this one up. Now, I don't know that they'll be able to finish that. That is teleport going to be used by the Silas. So Northeastern wants to re-engage on this one. This might be a bit aggressive from NIU. They're going to go ahead and follow up. Now, Smurfed is taken low. Hookshot going to not land. NIU will do a nice job. They'll back away from this one. Now, Boot, we're going to go ahead and disengage on on uh, Utopian Soldier. NIU may have stayed a little bit too long. They're going to go ahead and try to get this one back out. Flash going to be used as well by uh, by Bootwear to make sure he's able to escape. Fury going to just go ahead and put some pressure on here. Going to almost land his stun. Not able to grab it. NIU does have everybody here available. Now, Alt going to be used by, the, by Smurf, but it's going to be a lot of damage put over the wall. NIU going to lose their jungler here it will be the shutdown going over towards northeastern and quickly niu may have overstayed this one they've tried a little bit too much beach hill not able to put out the damage quite yet everybody on the side of northeastern is low but northeastern is going to start up this baron and i think they're going to be able to grab it i don't really think niu has a way to contest this although ultimate is going to be available for be chillin very soon so he may be able to get back on that no he will elect to just recall and niu over commits for the Baron and gets punished heavily for it. It will be a 3,000 gold lead in favor of Northeastern. And uh, despite the kill being the kill lead being in NIU's favor, it will be Northeastern able to grab the gold lead right back as soon as NIU got a slight taste of it. Now, this is what Northeastern wants to do with this game. They want to play for the split push. That's a Terminus finished up for the Varus. So, I mean, this Varus is built to be strictly for offense. There, There is no defensive item on that Varus right now. And so NIU has been able to take advantage of that and just get a lot of uh, picks on towards him. But now with the Baron and the Baron up minions... It does make things a little bit tough for the Huskies or for Northern Illinois here. 
be chilling. They'll be found here with the ultimate. Now, ultimate is going to land, and we'll see if NIU is able to grab anything. Fury does have a lot of uh, of his rage bar filled up. Now, he is going to have ulti available to him, but it won't really be much else out of that one. And are you just going to try to clear this wave? And here's what Northeastern is looking to do. They're trying to grab multiple waves with this Baron buff, and they have the Varus to be able to split push on the side. They have the uh, they have the ability to just continuously split push on either side. So, unfortunately, that is kind of now that the Baron has been taken by them, they have the ability to use their win condition here. Uh, and I will lose multiple turrets in this engage, and now that gold lead has just blossomed up to about 6,000, about five, five and a half at this point. Um, now, NIU with one or two good fights could really take this. Jisung going to be taken to about three quarters HP with a nice uh, little poke there from NIU. A lot of damage coming through from Ser or on towards Seraphine. It'll just be three used ultimate's gonna be used now bliss is uh in a bad spot he's gonna fall broccoli's gonna be able to grab the kill so it will be a one for one in the end but niu might lose their inhibitor tier or their inhibitor turret on the bot lane here for it they do have bootware available to them if they're able to dive nice nice stun does come through but now that is jisung able to grab a bunch of damage and that's the problem with this uh with this situation is as much as NIU just looks to engage on that, it's just the continuous push power that goes towards Northeastern. And uh, yeah, Northeastern just continuously putting those pings down. They just want to end the game, and I think they have the ability to do so. There's not really anybody that can kill the Varus right now. And nicely done. Now the ultimate does land, but they're not going to have any damage to follow it up. And that's going to be Northeastern finishing this game off at 26 minutes. Now, it was so much closer until it wasn't. But NIU, you can tell with how many pings Smurf was putting out that this was a team that was not comfortable in that position. Up until NIU made a, a little bit of a questionable Baron call, I, I really would argue that Northeastern is not a team that likes being put in that position and didn't like that NIU was keeping them that close. And so overall, despite it being a 2-0 in favor of Northeastern, Props to them. They are a wonderful team, and it was really cool to see them play. They, they're they very, very good, and I hope they go far in the conference. But looking at NIU, this is a team that has not shown everything they're capable of quite yet. And this game put that on showcase, and I think when people look back at the this match, uh, I think that there's going to be... Uh, there's going to be some question marks about is NIU actually better than their record? Because I, I think that this showing has proven that uh, NIU is. So overall, unfortunate outcome. We, we hope you enjoyed the broadcast, but uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. I hope you are too.